Well, Google's about to get a lot worse. Uh, we know that over the years, Google has gone out of its way, essentially, to control the outcomes of their search algorithm. Google, a search engine, got that way, obtained its dominance by being the most accurate response to questions. Early on, you would use Yahoo, you would use, you know, Dogpile, you would use Google, you would use, I mean, there were actually a lot of search engines back in the early days of the internet. The reason Google got big is because it was the best at indexing websites and uh, serving up the most relevant search results to the user. Those days have long come and gone, and now it's essentially a propaganda machine. We know that uh, essentially Google is more interested in uh, you know, uh, making sure you don't see anything good about a political person they don't like or anything bad about a, p a potential jab that they might want you to get. Um, they might want, you know, they control the paid search results. They control the organic search results. They've become essentially, at least in my opinion, essentially uh, arm of the government. And it's about to get a lot worse. By the way, if you know a better search engine out there, I used to recommend... Um, I used to recommend, um, I can't, I'm trying to think of the name of that one, but then their owner came out like uh, pro censorship after positioning themselves. What is their name? I'm trying to think of their name. They positioned themselves as like anti-censorship, pro free speech. And then they issued a totally brain dead take on, I think it was the jab if I remember right. So then I, I gave up on them. So I'll be, I'll be reading the comments. Um, by the way, the computer I use, the computer, the laptop I use, the computer my friends and family use is all brought to you by Meta PCs. Promo code the quartering, one word will save you money. They're they have military discounts, financing, um, they're veteran owned. Uh, they have custom computers, ready to build computers. I'm sorry, ready to buy computers. You can custom build them from the ground up, laptops, financing, meta PCs, promo code the quartering in the description down below for when you're right or when you're ready. Um, the search engine I was thinking about earlier was DuckDuckGo, um, and they caved. Now, Google vows to use AI models, what could go wrong, and work with the EU's anti-disinformation groups to global fact-check groups to censor misinformation and hate. Now, almost all of those words just mean censorship. Things that they don't want you to see things that they don't want you to like things. They don't want you to read. That's what all of that means. It's like hate speech, misinformation. Yeah, there is literal actual misinformation. It exists. Okay. However, we know that it's misinformation TM, which meant anything that went against the narrative and that definition always changes. You know, the misinformation, quote unquote, was uh, that a certain, you know, a certain thing came from a certain lab, right? You couldn't even find that in search engines. Well, now, whoa, look at that. Times changed and suddenly it's not misinformation. Anyway, Google is doing its uh, the best way, doing its best to manipulate information. A blog post on this uh, giant site calls this, quote, surfacing high quality information to voters. So what this is, pre-election censorship. This is, I believe, what people call fortification. You know, I think fortification, election fortification, is that the word that they were using? And with the way content is held on Google and on its platforms and services, where something surfaces, Others things, other things sink. This is via reclaimthenet.org, by the way. Information gets deranked. That's one thing to keep in mind. And another is the question, who decides, and based on what criteria, what is high-quality information? One might say only half-jokingly, democracy called and wants to know. In addition, Google is now vowing to use artificial intelligence tech more to counter what it decides is misinformation around the election and leverage AI models 
to augment our efforts. Working with various anti-disinformation groups and, quote, fact checkers from around the world to facilitate censorship is also part of the promised support package. While the targets of this censorship will be the usual list of online boogeymen, as designated by Google and or governments, real or imagined, manipulated media, hate, harassment, misinformation. This is why sites like Rumble are so important. I know, you know, 70% of my viewers still choose to watch me on YouTube, and I respect that. I'm so thankful that you tune in. All I ever ask is that you consider at least watching my live show, which is at 1 Eastern, Monday through Friday, over on my Rumble page. But this is why, you know, my Rumble page is growing. Um, you know, I used to get one to 2,000 views per video, then it was three to 4,000. Now I routinely get 15 to 25,000. And I would suspect by the end of 2024, I'll get 40 to 50,000 views per video on Rumble. And maybe by the end of 2025, they'll be even, which would be incredible. It comes, I'm sorry, this will all have to be done at scale, Google Notes, hence the promise of bringing in more AI than ever before. When it comes to surfacing high quality information, some of what's presented is uncontroversial. If people search on how to vote, the search will result in relevant details regarding requirements, dates, etc. But there's also, quote, authoritative information specifically on YouTube. Now, this is something that, again, we talk about on, on YouTube. YouTube CEO Neil Mohan has posted up on the company blog just in time to, well, advance, reiterate the giant platform's policies regarding upcoming elections. Just in case anyone is worried things might improve, the post reassures them. YouTube will use its massive resources and the way the platform is structured as a search and recommendations to wipe out what it chooses to consider hate speech at the same time as to, quote, boost authoritative sources even more. This will be done when users search for topics related to the elections. Mohan spends a good time talking about the importance of creators and how YouTube intends to make their YouTube businesses even better. When you want to know what an authoritative source is, that's CNN. That's CNN. You're not going to see, there's never going to be, I'm telling you, I, I, I wish I was wrong and ho I hope I am. I really do. I hope I am. I don't think there will ever be another Tim Pool on YouTube. Hell, I don't even think there'll be another qu the quartering ever on YouTube again. I just, I don't, I don't think that the environment even exists. I mean, I look at my channel now. I used to gain pretty consistently 10,000 subscribers a month. Sometimes it'd be 20,000. I went from November to January without gaining any, zero, zero. I look at Tim, he's still pretty consistent, but he has months where he doesn't gain any either. The, and, and I think the door got closed behind us. You know, I have to be very careful with my YouTube audience as I continue to, you know, encourage them to, you know, consider watching me on, on Rumble and other platforms. Um, you know, I upload my videos early there, all this kind of stuff, but it's going to take years. So YouTube is still extremely important, extremely important. There's one glaring failure by omission in this pitch explaining what happens to creators and their content channels, often built for years, when they cross the sometimes invisible censorship line by Google's video behemoth. What happens is demonetization, deplatforming, disappearing. Finally, Mohan addresses, obviously not framing it in that way, how the censorship machine that one responsible for destroying many creators' works were, uh, when facing users and what YouTube plans on the front are for 2024. Tucked in the section about protecting the creator economy, the obligatory think of the children bit, the YouTube CEO writes, another way we uphold our responsibility is connecting people with high quality information that is more important than ever as elections take place across the globe. More than 50 countries will hold elections this year. Mohan repeats what's highly likely contained in some memo circulated in the usual big tech government collusion participants. It goes something like this, quote, when we're talking about the 2024 elections and how you're going to censor around them, mention how many ballots happening around the world rather than focusing on or ever mentioning the one that really matters to us, the United States one, which is true. The YouTube figurehead goes on to say that the platform is ensuring that 
When people look for election news on YouTube, authoritative sources are prominent in their searches and recommendations. No details are given as how YouTube is ensuring this, but Mohan is defiant about the past year's often shocking levels of censorship that his own language to describe it and leaves no room for doubt that trend will continue. Quote, We spent years investing in a playbook to responsibly manage content on YouTube, including longstanding, rigorously enforced policies against hate speech, incitement, election stuff, and more. We quickly evolve and adapt when new challenges emerge, and so we'll do so again. By the way, in case anyone wants to know, uh, in the pinned comment down below, I'm going to leave a link to uh, rumble.com slash C as in Charlie slash the quartering. Even if you're not ready, even if you're not ready to make the switch right now, and I understand that, consider going over there, signing up for an account, and subscribing to your and following your favorite creators. Uh, because there's going to be some point, I assure you, there's going to be some point where that's the only place you're going to be able to find the truth.